everybody. Welcome back to Patch Hog Firearms Restoration. Today I'm going to address one of my biggest pet peeves, and that's finding old guns that somebody's hosed up by trying to take out minor surface rust and totally ruining the finish of the firearm. So this right here is a Marlin 336 that came across my shop for a restoration. And the prior owner had probably some minor surface rust issues on it. But what they had done was they had attacked the rust with a very abrasive either piece of sandpaper or a, uh, a piece of the Scotch-Brite, which is generally very soft and you can use on woodwork. But when you attack a piece of steel that's got bluing on it, with this stuff what you end up doing is just stripping all of the bluing right off it's probably one of the worst things you could do um, I have this old Ruger 1022 barrel and let's see if I can get this thing to focus you could see it's got some minor surface rust on it the uh, the barrel itself has been shot out it no longer uh, retains any accuracy probably like 50 or 60 thousand rounds of ammo have gone through this thing and the rifle that I own this the original Ruger has been replaced with a new factory barrel so this one's kind of been sitting in the corner and it's picked up a little bit of little bit of surface rust and I'll show you what not to do and then what to do So whenever you use a piece of Scotch-Brite like this, whenever you go after some surface rust, like up here at the top, if you just take this and you just go at it, you'll get the rust off. Trust me, it'll come right off. But the result is all kinds of scratches, and if you attack it long enough, you'll actually take this down to white metal, and then the the original factory bluing is gone forever on this thing. Another thing I've seen picking up and going around used gun stores in my area is I found some firearms where it's literally looked like they've attacked these guns with sandpaper. In this case, 400 grit, which is fairly smooth, does a great job on a lot of applications. As soon as you attack a piece of bluing, even briefly, you end up taking all that bluing off along with the rust. So the only time you would ever do a gun barrel with a piece of sandpaper is if you mean to actually take it all the way down to the white and get it completely reblued. So scotch bright and sandpaper, no. Just throw them in the garbage, get rid of them. Not a good option. What I ended up doing on this 336 Marlin, even though it was attacked down to the white with what looked like sandpaper, there was some other areas that had um, still some minor surface rust left. So what I did was I used some penetrating fluid, and then I used three different things. I used an older all-copper penny, Wheat pennies are good. Don't get the newer pennies because if you get the newer pennies, they're made out of zinc. They don't work as good. Use a real copper penny or in the supermarket or, or at Lowe's, you can get all copper Brillo pads or one of the, for a fine, just very fine rust, you can use 3 aught or 4 aught steel wool. So I'm going to I'm going to do a little work up here on this front area where there's some minor surface rust and I'm going to I'm going to show a couple of different techniques on each section of the gun and give you guys an idea of what to do. So start out with some good penetrating fluid and what you're going to do is just just put it on nice liberal coat
and then you're gonna let it just set and soak in for a little while I'm just gonna go ahead and do the whole barrel here because we're gonna do several different techniques in different spots so the first technique is the penny and right up in here right up in this area if you run your finger across it like I'm doing you could feel the minor the bumps and ridges where the rust is in into the bluing all you do is just gently take that penny and just put it under your finger and just roll it back and forth to remove the rust now one thing to pay attention to before you actually start doing this is look at a section of the gun where the bluing is good and see which way the machining marks are any piece of steel what you don't want to do is go across the grain so to speak if the machining marks are all around the barrel in the circumference you don't want to go long long wise that'll create more scratches so always go in the same way that the piece of steel that's blued has been machined or finished so just gently rub this back and forth you don't need to bear down just go nice and easy and take your time and as you as you do this for a little bit you'll see what looks like marks that the copper's leaving in the steel don't worry about that it wipes right off with a clean rag and as you do this it'll feel smoother and smoother as you're running the penny across it you'll feel the ridges and then as you go a little bit more and a little bit more all of a sudden it just starts to feel smooth and the, the tone will change it'll sound less like you're sanding and less like you're just rubbing once you get it where it's feeling smooth grab a paper towel or a clean microfiber cloth wipe it off and then take a look at the rust spots again and you'll find that they get down into the bluing but the bluing is actually harder than the penny And this won't harm the gun's bluing as a result. It's very time consuming, but the uh, the payoff is well worth it. So as you can see, the luster and the sheen have been restored to that section of the barrel. You can still see some surface rust up in here. So let's let's attack that next section. We'll apply some more penetrating fluid. Now granted, I'm doing this for you guys on on YouTube. When I did the Marlin. I actually let the penetrating fluid soak in for a good 15 minutes. Go get a cup of coffee, chill. Same thing with the with the all copper Brillo pad. You don't want to bear down hard. You just want to gently go across it. Go with the machining marks. And as you can see right in here, I don't know, maybe if you can't, there's a little bit of dirt and stuff starting to come up. That's the actual rust starting to lift off. And just like with the penny, you'll feel it get smoother and smoother as you go.
in the case of the Marlin, I knew I was going to end up cold blowing it anyways because the metal was taken right down to the white. So when I did that one in a couple of spots, I actually did use uh, the steel wool and got down closer to the white and actually took off a little more of the bluing. just to make sure I got down deep enough to where the rust was. So right in here is where we used that copper Brillo pad. About in this section right here. Now up in here there's a couple of pits still left that we'll go back and attack again later with that penny. Or maybe we'll go back because the Brillo pad worked better. And the barrel is this much smoother. And after application of a coat of oil it'll help preserve the gun much more in the future. So up in here, this section right here, we're going to apply some more oil. And then I'm going to apply some 4 rot steel wool. Again, same way. So it's generally best, in my opinion, if you're going to do this, I would start with the 4 rot steel wool because it is the gentlest and it will take off far less material as you go. It's also the most sensitive where you could feel, like in this spot right here, where we didn't quite get it with the copper brillo, you can also feel more sensitively the spots that have the rust. I know it's difficult for you folks to see but it actually looks like the barrel has like mud on it right now and that's the the rust sloughing off. This was the section right here we just did with the steel wool. As you can see, it's got a pretty good sheen to it. I mean, it's not factory new, but that's because it sat in the corner of my shop for like two years. One of the places that you always see a lot of rust is where the factory stampings are for the caliber and the manufacturer. The reason for that is because with it slightly indent like that, stuff tends to collect in there and it causes the rust spots to begin so whenever you go over an area with the factory stampings always go very light because some of the stampings cause high spots and if you rub across them with something that's too abrasive you'll end up removing those high spots and then you get all these shiny places around where all the stamping is. So just go very gentle. Again, the, the 4 rot steel wool is ideal wherever there's factory engravings or proof marks. And this is one of the best ways out there to preserve the firearm's original patina. There we go. You can see the all the factory stampings very good. So that's what I got for you guys today. Don't screw up your freaking good old gun by using abrasive stuff on the bluing. That's going to wrap up this edition of Patch Hog Firearms Restoration. Hope you guys learned something today. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you have a passion for rebuilding and conserving old firearms like I do. Come back for the next episode. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody.